Okay, Honda's new 755cc Transalp. Who's it designed for? Well, I've been digging around in Honda's own press material and I've come across some pretty interesting findings. Honda R&D's Transalp project leader, Mr. Masatoshi Sato, said this. With our new Transalp, we looked hard at what made the first model so good and wanted to strike the right balance between urban agility, long distance on-road touring comfort and off-road ability. In arriving where we are, we have considered all these aspects in a 360 degree way and created a bike that gives riders of all experience levels a fresh new option in the Honda range. The look revives the classic Transalp presence in a modern key, the new engine is incredibly strong and versatile, and the bike has an appealing long and rich specification list, around town or around the world. Our Transalp is ready. Now that sounds very promising. I did go on to find these other little nuggets. Fairing and bodywork balance aerodynamic wind protection, on-road comfort, and off-road ability. So the fairing is designed to offer good wind protection on-road without being too cumbersome for off-road use. A range of accessories including quick shifter, soft and hard luggage, rally touring equipment, and cosmetic enhancements are all ready to go. This is great news. So all the accessories, luggage, quick shifter, and all the enhancements are gonna be right to go right from launch. I also read, handling is light, nimble, and confidence inspiring. The engine packs a great deal of Honda's engineering prowess into a small space and provides strong response across the rev range. Just what's needed for either solo or two-up touring. So the new Transalp is going to be designed to be a very competent one or two-up tourer, which is fantastic news. It goes on to say, refined settings of the throttle-by-wire system orientate the engine character towards touring and comfort. Again, touring and comfort. The steel diamond frame is lightweight thanks to optimization of wall slash pipe thickness and stiffness. The top suspension quality provides supple on-road performance and excellent off-road bump absorption. So the longer travel suspension, and I'll go into the specs in a moment, is designed to provide supple on-road performance and excellent bump absorption when you're off-road. So this is going to be a very nice riding bike. Now the new Transalp does feature a Honda smartphone voice control system for both Android and iOS. But reading through uh, the fine print, if you like, I did come across this. Also incorporated into the interface is the Honda smartphone voice control system, which links the rider to their Android while on the move and allows voice management of phone calls, messages, music, and navigation. Now that's interesting, they just said Android. It goes on to say, several of the HSVC's functions will also be accessible on iOS smartphones. So what I'm reading there is, although it's available for both Android and iOS smartphones, their new voice control system really sounds like it's optimized for Android and you'll only have some of the features on iOS. So that's going to be something that we need to investigate a little further down the road once the bike becomes available and just see what that voice control system can do on Android versus what it can do on iOS. It also says a helmet mounted headset is needed and the smartphone connects to the dash via Bluetooth. Management of the Honda smartphone voice control is also possible using buttons on the left switch gear. Now the Transalp also features Honda's emergency stop signal technology to warn other road users of sudden braking. Basically the rear indicators will flash if you apply to brakes suddenly under 56 kilometers an hour I think it is. Now another thing I read about comfort was this. This bike is built to go the distance, so genuine comfort also for two matters. Now, it's obviously been translated from Japanese. So again, they're saying that this bike is designed to be genuinely comfortable for both rider and pillion. The high visibility TFT screen, which offers four types of speed slash RPM display, three analog rev counter styles and one bar, according to rider preference, as well as a fuel gauge and consumption riding mode selection and engine parameters, gear selected and customizable shift up point on the rev counter. 
Management is via the screen and switch gear on the left handlebar. Regarding the engine performance characteristics, it produces a hard hit of top end power with maximum output of 67.5 kilowatts at 9,500 RPM. Now, when I first read that, that was a bit worrying because I was worried that it's gonna be all top end on this bike. But then it goes on to say, this is accompanied by mountains of usable torque in the low to mid range RPM, rising to a peak of 75 Newton meters at 7,250 RPM. The result is an engine that provides usable, enjoyable performance for rides of all types and all distances, and for riders of all experience levels. So it looks like Honda have been able to pull off a bit of a trick here where the engine in the Transalp and Hornet will produce a high-end kick of horsepower whilst still retaining mountains of usable torque. This is what they said, mountains of usable torque. Now, personally, I like torque. I like to ride a bike on torque. And I'm not so much into the high-end horsepower because that generally relates to me to high-end speeds or top speeds. Now, in a country where going over 100 k's an hour on a highway is uh, only asking for trouble, I need a bike that has really good torque and really usable torque. So this engine is again speaking to me. It goes on to say, the crank uses a 270 degree firing order for characterful twin cylinder pulse feeling. The engine note is tuned for a pleasing low end beat and raucous top end howl. Now here's another thing I read in relation to the Hornet versus the Transalp. While mechanically identical to the Hornet, the Transalp's engine throttle by wire settings are tuned differently to focus on engine flavor, making the Transalp the ideal machine for long distance touring. Again, the long distance touring. Fuel economy figures suggest a potential range of 390 kilometers on one tank of fuel. And just like the Hornet, a 35 kilowatt A2 license option will also be available through a quick ECU remap at a Honda dealer. Now I only recently learned that won't apply in Australia because our learner license laws state that the engine can't be larger than 660 cc's I think. So being able to remap the engine down to 35 kilowatts which is basically half the power will only happen in Europe and Britain and countries like that I, I suggest or I believe. Another thing I read about the Transalp is the frame is actually 10% lighter than Honda's own CB500X. That's quite an achievement because the CB500X is not a heavy bike. Now it goes on to say, the suspension specifications have been selected with the all-round concept firmly in mind, with long travel and superb bump absorption to deliver smooth performance and comfort on-road and reassuring control off-road. So again, that sounds like a really nice suspension package. Now in some countries you'll have the option of packs that you can get for this bike. You'll have an urban pack, a touring pack, an adventure pack, a rally pack, and a comfort pack. Sadly, we don't tend to get those in Australia. We just get the bike and this is it, here it is. And if you want some accessories, you can put them on. But I have seen in Britain and Europe, you can option the bike up with a pack. So there's going to be a, a selection here. The urban pack will give you a 50 liter top box, aluminum panel, mounting base, pillion pad, and inner bag, plus a tall screen and center stand. So that's the urban pack. The Touring Pack will give you rear panniers, uh, 26 litre on the right and 33 litres on the left, aluminium panels, support stays, inner bags and heated grips, but no centre stand for the Touring Pack. The Adventure Pack will give you side pipes, LED fog lights and a radiator grill. It's worth mentioning these because this will be the accessory range if you like for countries that don't have the packs. The Rally Pack will have a quick shifter, engine guard, bash plate, off-road rally foot pegs and knuckle guards with extensions. And the comfort pack will have a three liter tank bag, wind deflectors, good to see they're available, comfort pillion foot pegs and AAC charging socket. Additional accessories include side tank pads and color matched wheel stripes and all accessories are also available separately. So, so there you go, you can buy any of those accessories to upgrade your Transalp at any time. Okay, now we're gonna look at the specs. So the engine is a 755cc eight valve parallel twin, producing 67.5 kilowatts of horsepower and 75 Newton meters of torque. 
Peak power is developed at 9,500 RPM and peak torque comes on at 7,250 RPM. The weight of the bike is 208 kilograms wet. Ground clearance is 210 millimeters. For suspension, the bike has 43 millimeter inverted show-off forks on the front with 200 millimeters of travel. And the rear suspension travel is 190 millimeters and that's just a single shock. Overall dimensions, people have asked for this, are 2,325 millimeters long, 838 millimeters wide, and 1,450 millimeters high. So that roughly equates to just under eight feet long, just under three feet wide, and just under five foot high. Now the wheels are spoked stainless steel, but looking at the spoke placement, I think this bike's going to need tubes. The front wheel is 21 inch in size and the rear wheel is 18 inches in size. Brakes on the front are twin 310 millimeter discs and on the rear is a single 256 millimeter disc. The instruments are TFT. Uh, the bike has an LED headlight and tail light. The Honda smartphone voice control system is standard. There is a USB Type-C outlet under the pillion seat and an optional 12 volt socket is available. Self cancelling indicators are standard. Quick shifter is optional. Honda's security system, HISS, is standard. The fuel tank size is 16.9 litres. Now the fuel economy is 4.35 litres per 100 kilometres or 54 US miles per gallon. For you guys in Britain that equates to 65 miles per gallon. And it's not that the bike is tuned differently for Britain, it's just that Britain and the US measure a gallon differently. So, it's, so a gallon in the US is 3.8 litres and a gallon in Britain is 4.5 litres. The gearbox is a six speed with a slipper assist clutch. Final drive is by chain, so it's chain drive. Now the seat height is 850 millimeters, but there is an optional 820 millimeter seat available for the Transalp. Now when it comes to rider modes, you have four default rider modes. You've got sport, standard, rain, and gravel. And each mode has user customization options. You have four levels of engine power and three of engine braking. Five stage Honda selectable torque control with integrated wheelie control. The off road ABS brake setting allows the rear caliper to be switched off in user mode. Now, the colors are matte iridium gray, metallic matte ballistic black, and metallic rose white tricolor. Now, whether you'll see those colors in your market will depend on Honda. Typically, we only get one or two colors here in Australia, but you never know, we might get to see all the three colors this time. Now, in summing up, I think the takeaway for me is that the Transalp is going to offer a really nice mix of touring urban riding. It's going to be nice and light and agile for riding around the streets and really nice off-road ability. I don't think it's going to be a hardcore off-roader. I'm sure there are going to be better bikes on the market for that sort of thing. But I think what Honda are trying to do is to strike a balance between touring, urban, and off-road ability, and probably in a better way than the Africa Twin. Although I would argue that the Africa Twin may make a better long distance tourer, being a bit larger. But Honda do say that their focus is on touring comfort, so for two up. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Now, there was one emission that I saw, which was there's no mention of cruise control. For a bike that's going to do touring, I would have thought that cruise control would be a high priority, especially as a bike has throttle by wire. There's absolutely no reason why they couldn't put cruise control on this bike. So, so that's a bit of a downer for me. And I think not having tubeless wheels could be a problem for some people. For me personally, it wouldn't really worry me, I don't think. But um, for some people, they like to have tubeless tires, so uh, that could be an issue as well. And the other thing I did see in the press images was that there appears to be two different size screens. And I'm curious to see how effective that wind protection is with the larger screen for taller riders, for people over six foot. So that's going to be interesting to see as well. So the next video I'm going to make is the Do I Fit video for this bike, where we'll see who can reach the ground, who can flat foot, and who looks comfortable on the bike. So watch out for that video coming up next.